Well, this is lab six. Um, go into Schoology week nine, and you're going to find that there's a video tutorial which you're watching. And also, if you don't prefer the video tutorials and you like to kind of follow step by step in a written format, you can also click on the handout. You can use the video tutorial or the handout. Either one really um, will suffice. And then this is where you're going to submit. So if you're going to do the video, go ahead and start watching it. But if you're going to do the handout, go ahead and click on here and just kind of follow along here. There's a lot of steps, so don't get overwhelmed. Um, you'll find that once you get the hang of this, you're going to be doing this, um, you know, within 10 minutes you'll be done with this when you do this to your photos. All right. So the very first thing you're going to do, um, you might want to go to the handout because the link for the image that you're going to be editing is in the handout. So number two in the handout, just click here, and this is going to open up your uh, my drive, and I've shared this image of the sunflower with you. I took this picture um, out in the fields of woodland when the sunflowers were all lit up, and that's kind of a neat place to explore when that happens, so I encourage you to do that next year. All right, so you're just going to download this picture. Um, and once you download it, I want you to go back to your um, desktop here, and I want you to make a new folder, and you're going to title this folder lab number six underscore your last name. And my underscore buttons are all messed up right now. Okay, so you're going to have that sitting there. So double click on that, open it up, and I want you to drag that image that you just downloaded into this folder so you have that to go. All right, so once you have it on the desktop and it's no longer here, I want you to put it in Photoshop. Don't worry about bridge because we're just doing this one photo. All right, so we're going to kind of close that up and maybe you're going to minimize this just so it's not in the way. All right, so you're going to go through your Photoshop um, 5 workflow, the first couple steps. Anytime you open up a new photo and you do this, you should be going through these steps. So very first thing is assign profile. You're going to notice that this image, um, because I took it with my camera, it's actually not the right profile, color profile. So you need to switch it to Adobe RGB 1998. And then the next thing you do is you want to create your background copy. So again, control, click, duplicate layer. I just call it background copy. I don't need to waste my time renaming it. And then you want to go up to Filter, Sharpen. And, and if you didn't know this, you can move this around and find a really good spot to look at. Remember, your radius is always 1. And then I'd take it way over here just so you can see what happens when it's super sharp. It's too grainy. So I like to kind of take it down sort of right before I see the grain pop up. So I'll take it to the grain and then I back it up. Okay. Okay. All right, so the purpose of this workflow lab is we're going to learn how to do selections. So for this lab, we're going to select the sky and save it, and then we're going to adjust it separately, and we're going to select all of the shadows that we see between the leaves and on the leaves and inside the sunflower as a separate selection and then adjust those. So the first tool I want to point out to you is this tool right here. Okay, so there's two options here. We have the magic wand tool, which is a selection tool and a quick selection tool. Um, the first the one I want you to start with, which is actually one of the easier ones, is the magic wand. Now there's a couple different ways you can find this. You can hold the control key down and click and you're gonna choose, or if you get super fancy, you can hold the option key down and just click and it's gonna switch back and forth. So we want the magic wand. Now a couple things to notice up here in the settings. I want you not to be clicked on the one box, but the overlapping box. This is what we want. And then we also want to pay attention to our tolerance here. The lower the tolerance, the smaller the selection, and the higher the number, the bigger the selection. So I think that 20 is pretty good. So I'm just going to click on this. And what it does is it grabs everything in this area that is similar to what you clicked on. So I can actually go through and I can kind of click on most of the blue and capture it. Now this is a fairly simple image here, um, very distinct graphic uh, petals to the flowers, so it's easy, it works, right? Um, if you want to zoom in on the photo, which I really recommend that you do, especially for the detail work, you can go in here and you can start clicking on all these little blue negative spaces that you're going to see 
and because my tolerance is pretty low, um, it's working, which is great. Sometimes this doesn't work. If you have fuzzier edges, um, it just does. It's not going to work. It's going to kind of fill into spaces you don't want it to fill. So our, the point is, we're trying to grab the sky, all of the little bits of sky that we see. And the more detailed we can get with this, the better. So I'm going to really kind of go through all the petals and pay attention to where my sky is. So little bits over here, here, and even here. Okay, and I'm going to back it up again, make sure I have everything. All right, so the next tool I want to teach you about is in the same area here. The quick selection tool. Now this tool is kind of neat because you have a little bit more control over your selection here. So go up here and pay attention to the little settings here. Um, if you click on the plus sign, within the sky you're going to be adding. Let me show you what I mean by that. So you could add more. You could push it. You actually are kind of like painting it. So if you wanted to push it in but then you realize, whoops, I went too far. I, I didn't want to push it beyond those petals there. So you go up to the little minus sign and you can push it back. I like painting. Um, so it's a really good idea to be super close when you're doing this because then you can really kind of sculpt it into what you want. And you're going to have a challenge here because this I use a um, shallow depth of field with this shot and so the sunflowers that are off into the distance here are blurrier. So you're going to have to feather this edge really good. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to capture all that yellow. And then if I, I'm in here and I want to kind of clean this up a little bit, but I'm in the blue. So if I hit the negative sign in here, it's not going to work because I'm not, that's my plus sign. So I'm going to go in and open, expand that. And then it went a little too far, so I'm going to just kind of tease it back. And the neat thing about this is if you can mess around with your brush size. So if your brush is really big, then you're going to push it too far. And if your brush is nice and small, um, it's going to be more delicate. Um, and then you can also mess around with the hardness of your brush. So I'd stay um, 13, 14, 15. That's probably pretty good. Okay. So just watch me for a second here. I'm going to just kind of fine tune these little areas. Well, that went a little too far because I can tell that this is a highlight on the stem. And this is too, so I don't want that to be blue. Okay, I'm using my little scroll thing here. And again, I'm minusing that because I'm not in the sky. If I'm not in the sky, I could push it back. So I might even, I mean, I can even get and kind of capture these little wispy pieces here. But I'm going to have to kind of go back and forth because you can see that it sort of, and then I can grab that negative space and I can kind of push that out a little bit. I can push this in. And I go around and just kind of really looking at it, making sure I get all my little areas here. So I'm gonna maybe make this a little bigger and then kind of push it back that way. Kind of get in there. And a little bit right there. I could kind of sweep in there and get that. And there's little bits here and there. And you'll see you'll, you've missed a couple spots, so you're going to go in there and get that. Now, there's certain things that are easier. Like I said, this is a pretty graphic line. Uh, <clears throat> when you start doing things like hair, it's going to get red. <laughs> really frustrating um, because you got all these little wispies um, so there's other tricks we can um, tackle if we have those issues so I'm going to grab that and we call these marching ants when you see the selection they're called marching ants so if you ever hear me say that that's what I'm talking about all right so I think that I'm pretty much good on that so we have to save this selection or it's going to disappear on us and we're going to be real super frustrated. Another little thing I want to teach you is if you created a selection over here and you really hate the way it looks and you just want to scrap the whole thing, 
all you have to do is hold down the command key and hit D and that stands for deselect and that will erase all of it. If you don't want to erase all of it but just a couple steps of selections, just go into your um, history here and just click on one that's a couple steps back, a couple jumps back. Now your history goes about 20 jumps back so just keep that in mind after about 20 jumps it disappears. Alright, so to save the selection we're going to go to select and then save selection and we're going to call it sky and then we're just going to hit OK and that saves it. So once we save it then we can, there's tricks I could teach you later but I'm not going to go there yet, we can deselect it so it goes away and now I want you to select all of the shadows. Okay, so to do that I think we should use our magic wand because this is kind of cool, you'll really see it grabs everything that is similar to what you clicked on. So it's going to grab all the shadows. And I'm going to go around and kind of get the bigger chunks first and then I'll, I'll kind of zoom in and get the smaller chunks. And again you can adjust your tolerance. So maybe I want to go a little smaller on that just because it's more delicate. And I want to get some of the shadows. You see how it grabs less because I took it down to 15? or it grabs all of the darkness in those areas. So I think I'm going to bring it in here so I can see better. But I even want to get these little areas here. So anything that is in shadow I want to grab. And that's mostly um, because I feel like maybe my shadows in this photograph are a little too dark, a little too contrasty. And I want to um, get a little bit more information from them when I'm editing. When I look at the photo, I want to see more of what's going on in the details of the shadows. Sometimes I'll just go from corner to corner in a photo. If it's zoomed in, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any shadow areas. And again, if you don't like a selection you did, do not hit Command D because um, it will deselect everything. If you don't like a tiny little selection you did, go up to history and step back a couple jumps and that will be um, a lot more efficient for you. Okay, so I'm going from corner to corner make sure I'm getting all my little, I mean these little areas don't matter so much. I'm being a little bit meticulous here but see I don't like what that happened there. See how it just kind of grabbed it all? So I'm going to go back and just jump one back and it, I get back what I had. So that's a really handy tool. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out again. Take a double take. It looks like I missed this area here. I'm going to go in and do a little bit more selecting in here. And that little guy right there. And then that. Whoop. This guy right here, here, and there. All right, you could spend forever on this. And, you know, really, I want to teach you these things, but I want you to be super fast and efficient with them because if you become a professional photographer, uh, you cannot spend 10, 15, 20 minutes on each image. You will drive yourself crazy and you'll be wasting your money because they're not paying you to sit there and edit each photo for an hour. So you, you're going to get good at doing these things, but you're going to get fast, and you're going to know when too much is too much, okay? Especially, you got to think about, like, what you're editing your photos for. Is this a project for you, and you care about this image, and you can spend hours on it? Or are you editing 150 photos from a wedding, and you got to get it done, and you got to get paid? So, you know, really got to put it into a context here. Okay, so I have all my shadows. Remember, i got to save it. If I don't save it, I lose all that work. So I'm going to go up to select, save selection. I'm going to name it shadows. Okay, now I have my sky saved and I have my shadows saved. So I can deselect that. Next step, in order to adjust a saved layer, you have to load that selection. So go into load selection. We're going to load the sky. You're going to see it pop up there. And the second it does that, and the minute you touch, you click on an adjustment layer, we're going to go to levels, it creates a new layer. And in this layer, you're going to see this little picture here. And in the picture, the black is what you're masking, you're blocking out. So we're not adjusting that part. 
and the white is what you're going to adjust. So we're going to adjust the exposure of the sky. So here's our histogram exposure now. You can see there's hardly any dark in the sky. So we're going to pull it this way. Now if you took it all away, I mean, look at that it's darkness, right? But we're trying to be realistic here. So we're going to bring it back and we're going to have a natural curve in our histogram. Now I want you to really pay attention. See this little edge here? We don't want that. That makes the image look super photoshopped. So you got to kind of pull it back so that that edge disappears. So you got to fine tune it a bit. So you want a little bit more contrast in the sky, but you don't want that edge there. Like no, no edge. See how the edge kind of disappears there? We don't really need too many more highlights, so we're just kind of messing around with the contrast here. Okay. Now this is a new step here. We're still going to go up to this layer here, this mask layer, but we're not going to feather here. We're going to go into a more advanced mode and click on mask edge. And this is kind of a cool feature because um, it really shows you where your line is your dividing line between your sections, your selections. So I like to use the red one. You can try the other ones too, but I like to use the red because it's really obvious what's going on there. Um, this is a cool tool because if your selection was kind of sloppy, you can shift the edge of your selection. You can drag it bigger or smaller. But I encourage you, if you made a good selection and it's nice and tight, don't mess with that because that's going to give you this weird halo. So the only thing I really mess with is the feather. I feather it just a little, little bit. If I feather it too much, I get this weird halo effect. Don't want that. Just a tiny little bit. Okay. Um, and you might ask, well, why don't I just feather it in the last step? It seems easier. Well, you can see now and you can get in real technical here and do the smoothing and all that stuff. You can get into that later if you want but you can see what's happening, okay? So when you click on OK, it goes back. So you're just kind of making sure that your edges look okay still. They're not too defined. All right, we're gonna minimize that. Now remember, if you wanna go back to this, you don't click on levels again, because that's gonna make a new layer. See what happens? We don't want that layer, so we're gonna del delete that layer. Okay, so we just want this one. But if you want to go back to it, you just go to the bracketed area, double click, and it opens again. But you're going to notice that everything resets. Feathers back down to zero. So it's going to readjust what you readjusted. Or readjust what you adjusted. So that's not so great. So try to get it um, right in the first try. All right, so now that we've adjusted our exposure in the sky, we want to adjust the color. So we're going to go up to load selection. You have to reload it every time. Sky, so that's loaded now. And now we're going to adjust the color balance. Remember, we're not using hue saturation. We're using color balance. All right, so I'm going to mess around with my color. Still want it to be realistic. So I don't want to see any green, turquoise, super psychedelic skies. <laughs> Let's just keep it kind of, kind of real, OK? And we're going to go up to our mask, and again, we're going to go to our fancy mask layer. It's in the red, and we're not going to shift the edge at all. We're just going to feather it a smidge. Hit OK. Looks good. All right. Now we need to work with the shadows. So we're going to load our shadow. I'm going to grab, whoops, I'm going to grab the wrong one. We're going to load our shadows and then we're going to do the same thing levels and shadows are hard you know because look what happens when I lighten the shadows up too much it becomes this weird psychedelic kind of everything's outlined it's too much so you really can just pull it up just a bit see how dark it was before I'm going to pull up the detail in the shadows a little bit but I don't want to get that weird outlining sort of um, effect. I want to just kind of capture the details a little bit, maybe bring up the highlights just a smidge. Okay, And then I go to my fancy mask layer, mask edge. Now I can see where all my shadows are. And I'm not going to adjust the edge, shift the edge, maybe a little bit, just so you can see what it does. And then 
See what happens when you go too far? You get this like, whoa, it doesn't, you know, it just kind of goes crazy and it's not going to look real. So we're just doing a subtle shift here. Okay, so now our shadows are a little bit brighter, a little bit more detail in them. Um, and now we want to mess around a little bit with the color of the leaves. So again, we load our selection, shadows, and then we click on color balance. And then again, we're looking for realism, but maybe we want it to be a little bit brighter. Maybe the sun's coming through a little bit more. And then mask, mask edge. And then feather it out just a little bit. Okay. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for here. Finishing touches. Don't forget, you want to do your sharpen on sharp mask one more time. And hang on, once you gotta grab the background copy. I always forget to do that. It's just something that happens. Um, you want to grab background copy and you want to go to sharpen okay so now we can kind of see I think maybe I'm going to drag it this way this time so I can see a little bit of the um, petals along with there we go I think that I'm going to soften it a bit it looks a little greeny to me so I tend to do that I usually over sharp it at the start and then I bring it down to a softer edge and maybe that's just my aesthetic. That's what I prefer. I think it just smooths the image out just a little bit because it's already super sharp. I don't need it to be grainy and I don't need it to be um, gritty. All right, so those are the adjustments that we've made here. So a couple more steps. We're going to image, image size. This is a giant file, 83 inches tall. Okay, we can't even print that big. So you go to your tallest, or your widest or your tallest and change that to 17 and then make sure your resolution is 300 okay and then you're going to save it save as I'm going to say lab number six with last name and you're going to save it as a PST it's going to go straight to your folder on the desktop which is awesome Hit save and then, of course, you're going to save it as a JPEG as well. And JPEG, save. Okay. All right, minimize that. Before you close it, let's look at what's in here. So you should have three pictures. You should have the original, and then you should have your JPEG and your PSD. JPEG, PSD. So what I want you to do before you close everything down is open that up again and look at the original. I want you to compare the two side by side. And this is kind of fun because you can really see the changes that you made. Um, so the image, we see a little bit more of our shadows. Uh, it's a little brighter down here. This color is a little bit more saturated. It looks kind of anemic now. The sky is bluer, but it's not so blue that we think it's fake. Um, and everything just looks a little bit happier, right? Okay, so now that we have these things, I'm going to take it to the next level here. We've got our folder on there. And then you guys. Okay, so what you're going to do, the final steps of this, right? I prefer if you call me over and show me um, when you're done with these. And when you do call me over before you raise your hand, open your images, open your PSD in Photoshop. So I don't have to stand there and wait for you to open it, okay? Just have it open, raise your hand and say, Miss Greninger, please grade my lab six. And then I will look through your layers and ask you some questions. Boom, there's your grade. So much faster than me having to open every single PSD. Um, you know, when I'm after school, when I'm grading, it takes me hours to do that. So, but I still want you to submit it because then there's proof that you submitted it and we have that conversation. So you're going to go into your class here, and this is my teacher view here, but you're going to go to week nine, submissions, and um, this looks different. You're going to just hit the submit tab, and then when that box pops up, you hit the create tab, copy and paste the link. Okay, so before you do that, you're going to actually go back. So you're going to go into that folder where you saved all of your 
um, weeks, right? And you're gonna go to week nine. I made a fake week nine. And then you're gonna make a folder that says lab six, your last name, double click on it. I already did this, so pretend like these aren't here. And then you're just gonna grab that folder and drag it right in there. It's gonna take a second to upload. And then you get into that folder and you'll see three images. Um, then you're gonna share it with me, get the link, share. And I always do this. I just say on public on the web. That's what I do. Cause then I know, don't have to worry about people not being able to see it. Save it, copy. Okay, it's copied go back to Schoology, submit, create, paste my link. Hit submit, done. Okay. Um, extra credit. If you want to do this, this whole workflow to an image of your own, which I encourage you to do, using at least two selections, maybe even more, I will give you five extra credit points. And I encourage you to do that because this is the workflow that you're going to be doing every single image that you submit to me now. And we're going to keep building and adding on this. I'm going to keep teaching you new tools. Um, so by the end of the year, you're going to be doing a bunch of stuff to each photo. So we're just going to keep building on it. All right. Thank you so much. And please, please, please ask me questions. If you have questions, um, don't be afraid to ask for a demo. Sometimes we need to see it in person and walk through it together um, to understand it. And I totally get that because I'm a visual learner as well. All right. Good luck. Bye.